casino operators, whether or not it's in Cambodia, Laos, um, Vietnam, uh, or Mexico. And <clears throat> what we do is we, for every person that walks into one of the sports books that we operate off the casino floor, we basically convert that, uh, that individual from uh, walking up and making a bet to immediately converting that person to an online better. Okay, so it's, it's almost, it almost invites uh, a scenario where um, it's, it's, it's free marketing for us and free uh, name branding, okay, with the, uh, the goal of converting uh, each one of our customers online. We don't have to deal with agents. We don't have to deal, we don't have to deal with agent commissions or rebates. Same thing with junkets. We don't have to offer junket, uh, junket commissions and rebates. It's, it's head-to-head -head action, and, and, and that's the way we do it. Um, most companies, uh, and Magnus will, Magnus will uh, confirm this, they, they have deep coffers for marketing. And uh, footballbet.com, we don't have as uh, deep coffers as they do. We don't have uh, a position in the market like uh, BetVictor does. Um, so we try to do it, you know, we try to do it uh, a different way. You mentioned, you know, Paddy Power, in your opinion, is, is head and shoulders above the rest. Why? What are they doing that the others aren't? They're marketing. They're social networking. Um, you know, we have an issue uh, in both my platforms, uh, footballbet.com and betmex.com, the word bet is in it. And uh, companies like, uh, platforms like uh, Twitter and uh, Facebook, they don't allow, uh, they don't allow operators that have uh, anything to do with gambling or betting to create any pages to, uh, to get the social networking out there. So we, uh, we're trying to figure out a way to do it now, but Patty Power, uh, no doubt about it, they're, they're some of the best social networkers when it comes to their product. And uh, Magnus, I want to ask you, you've mentioned previously that, in your opinion, that these mar big marquee events like the World Cup or, I guess, the Olympics or something like that um, are, in your opinion, to a large extent, deadlines to finish projects rather than uh, necessarily a major revenue drive. Could you talk a little bit about what you mean by that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first of all, you can make money out of the World Cup, no doubt, and you will get the volume, no doubt, as well. But uh, with events like this, there's a limited number of, of, of events taking place, so it is to some extent unpredictable. David is right, it's a great uh, acquisition tool. Uh, you get customers that you normally would not reach simply because of the, the reach and the interest in World Cup. But uh, what, what makes it even more interesting is that we know that it's such a big event. So we as operators, we, we put a lot of effort to have massive projects. I mean, you, we, the deadline is always, you know, before World Cup, before World Cup, before World Cup. It's only now that we start to think about after World Cup. Well, we do think after World Cup, and we plan a little bit better than that. But it's such a, a big thing. So, you know, it's sort of the finishing line for, be it, you know, a CRM reshape, be it the new site design, maybe it's database optimization so to be able to handle massive uh, bet volumes, if you like. It can be new marketing techniques that we're trying out. It's, it's a little bit graduation day. You know, everything has to be done by the start of the event to make sure that we can handle all these new customers that come in. And we would have done these things anyway, but it provides a logical <laughs> reason to, to finish it off. And, and Magnus, again, talking about in-play betting that, uh, that uh, David was talking about, you know, how, how big is in-play betting in the Asian market? I mean, I know in the UK and European market, it, I'm hearing numbers that's getting up to 70, 80, 90 percent of, of all the turnover. I mean, in, in, is it a similar number here? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's similar. I mean, I, I don't want to dig into the exact number of that, that, that we have. But, yeah, it's, it's a substantial part of the revenue. We're, no, we're, no doubt about that. So. Well over half. So it's, um, it's, uh, bigger, it's a bigger deal than, uh, than, than betting before the jump. And, and that presents, obviously, certain challenges because, uh, you know, you've got you to frame your market and take your bets in, in a very quick period of time. You haven't got a, a week while the teams are announced and you can frame a market and have a Dutch auction with all your bookie mates or whatever it is that you do. So that, that presents you with some sort of operational challenges there, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, we've got to get it right. There's no, not much margin for error, particularly, you know, with a lot of Asian handicap betting where the margins are slim. So, yeah, it's, it's tough. It has to work. <laughs>
Oh, well, Javier, we're going to uh, bring you in here uh, now. Uh, talking about in-play betting has, has uh, some of, some influence on uh, the integrity of the game as, uh, as well. And just talking about integrity in general, uh, we had um, Kubun Hui came out yesterday, the former president of Interpol, and said, um, don't think that the World Cup is so big that there can't be match fixing in the World Cup. Uh, that there's so much money involved that you know there, there can be motivation for it. Just because the eyes of the world are on it doesn't mean it can't happen. I mean, you're part of an organisation that is charged with trying to stop this kind of activity, and I think everyone in this room has a vested interest in making sure it doesn't happen. I mean, what what are you guys doing? Uh, what strategies do you have uh, on that? And anything specifically about the World Cup in relation to match, match fixing? Uh, well, the, the first thing is that the, the statement by the former president of Interpol has not, is not he's not the, say, the first person saying that. A few months ago, uh, Ralph Mutzke, who is the uh, director of security for FIFA, also warned about the, the possibility that even the biggest, uh, the, 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 the biggest um, tournament, uh, the, the World Cup, could be, uh, could be uh, threatened by, by match fixing. Um, in fact, there, um, there is a, an important point, is that match fixing is the subsidi subsidiary crime. It's a secondary crime, which m its uh, main motivator is uh, committing betting fraud, sports uh, online fraud. And that, the, 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 the main volume of that is moving here in the Asian markets. So that's the first point that it's, it's important to make um, in relation to, to match fixing. Um, the, the, um, um, of course, in, in, in the World Cup, um, there is a heightened um, um, vigilance, but there is also much uh, bigger returns for, uh, returns for to commit the crime due to the high liquidity. There is a peak in, in, the, in the market then. So uh, this, this match fixing explosion is, is coming mainly uh, by motivated by betting fraud, as I said. Uh, it is not stopping. Uh, only two days ago in Singapore, there have been arrested 18 people in, in, a, in one of these rackets. Uh, what we think it is an, an illegal operator, mainly. 